Findings may not seem like the most exciting bits of snowboard kit, but it's very important that you choose the right ones. They form a vital link in the chain of command between you and your board. So when you're buying a new setup, it's important to get them right. When you're choosing a new pair of bindings, there's three things you need to look out for. Fit, flex and features. So first off, the fit. Now, fairly obviously, your binding needs to fit snugly with your boot. Bindings are adjustable, but only within reason. So you don't want an XL binding if you've got girls size three boots. What's less obvious is that your binding also needs to fit with your board. Most bindings come with a conventional four hole base plate. Now, this works on most standard boards, which have an insert pattern that matches it. However, Burton have for a long time been making boards with a three hole insert pattern. Now this doesn't work with a conventional base plate. More recently, Burton have started making boards with what they call the channel system, which is a single strip. And while they do provide a converter kit that works with all four screw binding plates for channel boards, you're probably better off buying a Burton binding, especially if it's one of their EST models which has a two screw insert pattern that works especially well with the channel. The second thing you need to think about when choosing your bindings is the flex. In general, stiffer bindings tend to be better for free riding or for advanced freestyle. Basically, anything where you're going fast and you really need the responsiveness and support that a really stiff binding can offer you. Softer bindings, on the other hand, are generally preferred by beginners who appreciate the extra forgiveness that they offer Jibbers also tend to ride softer bindings. In general, they're not going as fast when they hit the obstacles. And if you have a slightly softer binding on your board, you're more likely to get away with the occasional sketchy landing. That is, however, a rule of thumb and flex is a bit of a personal preference. So it's worth trying a few different models to find out what works for you. The third thing you want to think about when choosing your bindings are the features. The most important of these is the entry system. Now, most bindings have a conventional two-strap entry system, like this switchback here. You have a toe strap and a heel strap, both done up by ratchets. There are, however, variations. Flow bindings take a different approach. Back in the 90s, they invented the folding high back. This basically allows you to put your boot in around the back of the binding, and then you fold that up and just clip it in like that. Modern flow bindings do also have ratchets, but it's very much easier using that system there. More recently, Apo have come up with a third variant on the uh, binding entry system. They have essentially a bit of both. You have conventional ratchets here at the front, and you also have a high back which folds like a flow binding. Now what's interesting about this is when you fold the high back on an Apo, the heel cup there actually splits open so that it's even easier for you to get your foot in the back. Now, which entry system you choose is basically entirely down to personal preference. Some people swear by flow bindings, some people can't stand them. There are, of course, other features that are worth looking at when choosing your bindings. You may, for example, like the plastic buckles featured on something like the Switchback, or you may prefer the feel of the aluminium ones on the Apo binding. A lot of bindings these days also feature what are called gas pedals, which are essentially movable footbeds which you can use to adjust the amount that your binding sticks out underneath your boot. It's worth taking a closer look at the footbed as well and working out the amount of padding that's in there. Some people like a lot of padding under their boots. Some people think it makes the board feel a little bit mushy underfoot. These days, a lot of footbeds are canted. Now what that means is they're sloped at a slight angle. This makes it easier if you're riding in a freestyle duck footed stance because it feels slightly more natural on your knees. Other features that are worth considering when you're choosing your bindings are the high back. This switchback Haldor Helgerson model has a winged high back. Essentially, it's got a bit of extra material here, which Haldor Helgerson, who designed it, believes makes it easier to do nose presses. You may also want to look at the heel cup. The one on these switchbacks is made of plastic, but some brands make it out of metal because they believe it makes it lighter. It's also worth looking at the amount of the base plate which comes into contact with the board. 
a brand called Union prides itself on having minimal amounts of its base plate in contact with the board and they reckon that that allows for a more natural board flex beneath your feet. Essentially though, like the flex, the features that you like on your binding are a matter of personal preference. So my advice would be to go to a shop somewhere near a dry slope or a snow dome and try as many different kinds of bindings as possible to work out what works best for you.